Hello, I'm Francisco and this is what? A show about history. Or in this case, a show about art history and then just history in general. Today we are interpreting an image, but we are also talking about capitalism, social class, and one of the weirdest, most complicated paintings in the history of European art. The Arnolfini Portrait by Jan van Eyck. From a modern perspective, it may not look super weird, because it's basically a color portrait of a couple in a house in a layout that is not super unfamiliar to us in the 21st century. However, when you really look at it and you compare it to other paintings from the time, something is a little off. The Arnolfini portrait is from the 1430s. It is literally 600 years old. Back then, most paintings actually looked like this. Sure, it was the Renaissance, so painters were experimenting with perspective and realism and painting people looking in different directions. But generally speaking, paintings were either A, religious, or B, not of real breathing people unless they were royalty or nobility, in which case their social position was very obviously put into the painting. For example, like this. However, when we look at the elements of the Arnolfini portrait, there is so much more going on. There are two people, a man and a woman, with the woman looking directly at the man. This in itself is weird because this kind of interaction is not usually something you find in paintings from the time. Sure, important couples were shown together sometimes, but it was generally doing very specific formal things like getting married, getting crowned, or things like that. If we look out the window, we see a cherry tree with red cherries, which means it's summer. However, the only two summer garments in the painting are the man's hat, which is clearly meant to be worn outside because of its white brim, and the clocks on the floor, which nobody is wearing. The two people's clothes are decidedly not for the summer. They are both long, thick, and lined in fur. Once you focus on the clothes, something you may notice is just how weird the woman's dress is. For modern tastes, I mean. If you google green dresses, they look nothing like this one. She's wearing a blue underdress lined with white fur, and then a thick overdress which is so long that it pulls around her feet and she literally has to carry it up to stand. The sleeves are these two weirdly long slits on the side of her dress, also lined with fur, and they have decorative strips of fabric just hanging there. It's like whoever made her outfit was just like, all the fabric, use all the fabric. And then there's the color. If you've seen Ask a Mortician's video about the invention of green dyes during the Industrial Revolution, you will know that making green clothes that didn't cost a fortune or kill whoever who wore them was not really achieved until about the 20th century. 500 years after this portrait, making a dress of this magnitude and in that shade of bright green would have been an expensive, difficult process at the time. Contrary to popular belief, she is not pregnant. It's just a posture issue because her dress is clearly so heavy that she needs to hold it like that to be able to stand. It's very much like she's wearing a fabulous comforter. Also, consider the fur under her dress and overdress. That type of fur in that color is probably ermine or arctic fox, which are animals that are not easy to find in Europe and they are really not big animals. Imagine how many ermines it would take to line a dress like that. I'll give you a hint, a bunch of them. The two people in the portrait are not wearing crowns or jewelry, but their clothes alone would have been mind-bogglingly expensive at the time, and people seeing this portrait at the time would recognize them as such. Similar to this, we have other elements in the portrait that are just flaunting wealth. The chandelier, the convex mirror, the oranges, the bed. All these things put together into one picture are so expensive that it's not difficult to think about how a king or a noble or anyone working for a government really would think it's kinda tacky and kind of inappropriate to put them into a portrait. The two people in this portrait are flaunting a huge amount of wealth, which leads us to the very likely possibility that they are merchant capitalists at a time in history when capitalism is just beginning to reshape European society. During the Middle Ages, European society was divided into clear social classes, where the higher classes were rich and in charge of managing resources, and the lower classes were not rich and in charge of, you know, surviving, usually under the care of higher classes. There was no way of becoming a different social class because there was literally no reason to do things differently from how you were raised. If you were a royal or a noble, you were meant to have resources and know how to manage them for other people. If you were a peasant, you were meant to know how to work to survive, and that was it. However, around the late 1300s and the early 1400s, something different happened. 
The Byzantine Empire made sure the Middle East was peaceful and well communicated with a network of roads that merchants could use. And the Mongols conquered all of Asia and made an alliance with the Byzantines. Now, this covers about two-thirds of the world, so it was still really difficult to travel back and forth between Europe and Asia in the 14th century, but those who made it back with furs or oranges or spices, it was like they won the lottery. Trade between Asia and Europe became a lot easier than before, and when it would become difficult again, it actually created the incentives for Europeans to explore either ways around Africa or into the Americas. But the exploration age is another video. The important thing here is that the money that merchants made from trade was theirs, theirs alone. What they bought with it was also theirs, and if they invested this money to pay other people to work for them, the money they made was also theirs. This production of wealth through the use of private property is what we can conceptualize as the very initial stages of capitalism. It's a difficult idea to process nowadays, but owning things at a personal level was not a thing in Europe before capitalism around the 15th century. Sure, people used objects in their daily lives, but it was generally clear that they belonged to everyone, for example, a king's crown or an agricultural community's land, or that it was very personal stuff that no one else would really need to take from you, like your clothes or your, or your farming tools. When people stole things at the time, sure, it was offensive, but it was offensive from a very specific perspective. It was more, hey, I need that and you don't, than what we would see nowadays when someone steals something, which is more, hey, that's mine, not yours. Capitalism at this time made the second perspective basically the only way we can think about things nowadays. Seriously, try to picture something that doesn't belong to someone. It's really hard for us, and yet that was how it was in the Middle Ages, when your social class dictated your responsibilities. Merchant capitalists, later connected to the bourgeoisie, had no place in this social dynamic. Because they were not high class, in the old society, they would just be expected to be poor and work and survive for the rest of their lives. But now they had money, and they wanted to use that money to be important. The people in the Arnolfini portrait were not royalty or nobility. They were regular people who happened to have a lot of money. So were they going to spend it like royals and nobles, following the rules and conventions of a social class that not only didn't want to associate with people like them, but actively rejected them? No, they were going to pay for the weirdest clothes they could find and get a portrait done where even 600 years later, no one knows what's going on. We don't know if they're married. We don't know if she's dead. Maybe they're siblings. Whose dog is that? What is going on? Society at the time would expect lower class people like the the Arnolfinis to just be like, I'm hungry. But the Arnolfinis were actually like, In today's terms, this portrait is actually the equivalent of an influencer Instagram shot. Just showing the world how wealthy and attractive they are, for no reason anyone understands besides being like, well, beautiful. I hope you learned something. See you next time. I have a new backdrop because I moved. I hope there aren't too many copyright issues with my new backdrop.